Okay, so <laughs> this right here, I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna make this its own video because, uh, because it's important. Uh, because it involves me and my actions. Uh, it involves a uh, deity, uh, promise and maybe God. And I'll bring her up here. Um, and, uh, and it involves black people. Uh, I'm gonna get into it, get into it. Uh, first off, I'm gonna show you on the board over here what it is that I'm talking about. Um, and, uh, but, uh, but first, uh, we have my own admissions to go through. Um, so, uh, I highly doubt that anybody else, uh, especially in this day and age, is ever going to sit up here and tell you what I'm going to tell you. But, uh, but for, you know, first, let me, let me get her up here. Tennessee is staying here. You guys are going to see her. <coughs> um, and I got her a big old seashell I put on her. There. And she sits there. There y'all go. So, uh, so what you call it? So first off, uh, we gonna start with, uh, an admission that, uh, I highly doubt any white person will do with you, but, uh, but I just go ahead and admit it all for everybody real fast. Uh, the second thing, uh, has to do with another admission that, uh, I highly doubt any white person is going to tell you make sure I'm not going out the way too. And then, uh, the, um, then I have a couple experiences to go over with you. And then, uh, I have my introduction of, uh, Miss Yumiya, what my reaction was to it, and, uh, the promise I made her. And then I would get to fulfilling that promise. So, here we go. First thing uh, I'm going to tell you that no other white person will tell you is uh, just so we're absolutely clear. We have all at one point in time said the N-word, okay? Uh, um, appears to me that uh, everybody has, but, um, but due to the hurt and the trauma, I think it is, uh, it is important that somebody stand up here of white color and... Uh, Make sure that it's been admitted once and for all that uh, that we have all uh, we we've all every every single person of white skin has said the N word before, and uh, and I wanna I wanna understand that to you real fast. I want you to I want you to grasp it. This is this ain't this ain't an excuse, but this is this is the truth of the matter. Okay, this is this is the second thing that no white person is ever gonna tell you. Um, now. Could it be that because I was uh, born in Louisiana and I'm from the South, that uh, that my experience might be different from somebody who is born in the North? Uh, could be, right? So I might not really speak for all white people, but uh, my interactions with everybody seem like uh, at some point in time, whether you came from the South or not, uh, everybody of white denomination did or has relatives that do. And as a result, uh, the second thing I admit to you that no other white person will tell you is that uh, when we are brought up, we are indoctrinated. And I know that kind of sounds like its own thing, but it, it's, it's, it's the truth. If you really stop and think about it. These things are common for white folk to know, and I would imagine these things are common for everybody to know, but just in case they aren't, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's bang them out real fast. Uh, number one, uh, each and every white person brought into the world, uh, when they encounter their family is indoctrinated with every racist joke there is. Okay. 
uh, they are set at family functions, and uh, when you go and you visit your, you know, your 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 full family, you know, what I mean, uh, uh, if you, I say, if you, but I mean, I really do believe, right, from my own personal experiences, that when white people get together and uh, you got a whole family of them, uh, like as in extended family, uh, it has always happened um, that white racist jokes. Uh, come out and uh sort of young age we're taught these white racist jokes and uh at some point in time uh we are applauded if we have to know any of them or if we can say any of them back okay i uh, understand that to white people that might not look like indoctrination but exactly what i just explained to you really is indoctrination and uh the um the two things that uh, that I would like to share with you is uh, my two encounters uh, that I believe made me racist at the time, okay? And uh, that would be, uh, the first one is, is that um, I had a, I had a black girlfriend and, uh, and, I, and I, I really did have feelings for her and everything really was on the up and up. And uh, her uh, her mama her mama was actually from Africa, and her daddy was uh, was from France, and uh, but her mama and her daddy had separated, and uh, her mama was a single mama, so she'd have boyfriends, and one of these boyfriends that she happened to get with was actually from Africa as well. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but but she uh, when me and her were talking it out for. For the last brief second we ended up talking um she uh she she it seemed to have some sort of importance so uh i had a black girlfriend her name was megan she was pretty thing and uh what you call it uh, we had a lot in common and, and whatnot and uh you know uh, i was in high school so we, we was you know that too and uh the boyfriend found out and um but i won't go into his actions or anything like that because i'm not interested in spreading racism or bringing up any hurt feelings uh but it was the first time i had experienced racism towards me um as a white man and uh i say this is my admission about me being racist uh, it's what I did afterwards, and it's not that I did anything to the guy. It's not actually that I really did anything. It's that I didn't do anything, and that is, uh, after that man beat my ass, uh, I shunned Megan. And, uh, and my reaction was, uh, because I had always heard about racism in school, um, I never could be my own fault sorry I never expected it to come back this way when it did I didn't know how to handle it and uh it wasn't until I got older that I realized that um I was wrong and the reason why I qualify it as racism is because uh I didn't take into account the fact that uh it could be because I was young but I'm not trying to make any excuses uh I didn't take into account that if that man was that aggressive with me, how aggressive was he with Megan? And wouldn't she have needed me to be there to help her? Or wouldn't we want somebody to be there to help us? And who better than me? But, but I shunned her. Um, the second time that, um, that I feel that I was racist. Um, and I don't, I don't know, um, I really don't know. But when I hear my own words and when I, when I think about what my own words would be, it sounds racist to me, so I admit to that here right now. That is, uh, so I had gotten my Sri Antra and I had, uh, I had practiced blowing smoke on it every day. Uh, for three months, and God come to me and ask for a relationship. I told God I didn't care 
how God came to me. I said I would I would accept whatever whatever came to me that uh that however whatever form God wanted to take however God wanted to be. And God come to me in the form of Yamoja or Yumiya. What's so interesting is is that um now if you guys look into her uh her name is Okay, give me up. Alright. Um, when I first looked at that statue and I read that name, I thought to myself, I'm an American, right? I, uh, I don't know that I expected the deity or the statue that I got drawn to to be white, but... Uh, tell you the truth, I wouldn't have skipped a beat on accepting it. Um, I skip, I skipped a beat on Miss Yummy and, I, and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, but and 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 miraculously, somehow she is, she is, she has forgiven me, and uh, and the uh, the effect and the result and the experience that I had was. Uh, truthful and it was it was of my personage and because uh when i got back to coming back towards this shed i was all proud and i was like no nah, i'm an american i i don't know nothing about no other culture nothing like that and i said no in this shed and i looked up on my altar and when when she when she wasn't when when she wasn't there um i felt low right i felt like dirt right because i had asked for any relationship and uh, the day, uh, the that that next day, the second that store opened, I was there and I and I, and I got her and I brought her back home. And I thank you for being here. Um, and she's 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 been with me ever since. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna keep her out while I do this video uh, because this is this is all uh, me and her. Um, but uh, what you call it? Um. So number one, the the Orishas themselves uh, kind of spook me. Okay, that they're they're nature deities, um, but but they just they they just just they kind of spook me. All right, we'll just we'll just call it that. It, in a lot of ways, uh, in my dealings with uh, Yomoja, I I find uh, a reference or an aspect to. Uh, to Kali, and I hope I'm not bringing up any controversy there, but it might be, and I apologize if I am, or you know, so at least I'm not trying to, I just, her long hair, she's beautiful, she represents water, uh, Kali uh, took on the demon that she, every drop of blood that was spilled would hatch another demon, and so she had to drink the blood as she, as she sliced up the, the demon, it is, is yet another thing done for humankind, but, but but he, so 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 but anyways um so uh now i'd like to tell you two aspects of uh where i have stood against racism and that is uh number one um the thing that got me uh what's the word what's the word um not dispelled, disowned, there we go. It got me more or less disowned by my father's side of the family. So, uh, so my little cousin Aaron, my little cousin I gave property to down there because uh, this is the other thing, I, I, I ain't, I'm not racist and I have no interest in being around racist people. Um, especially where the hurt is so bad, you know. Uh, but uh, but he told me a story, and I, and I apologize to anybody I make feel any certain way. I don't mean anything bad to you. I tell him the truth. Um, so I speak it. Uh, but uh, my little cousin Aaron, uh, he said, you see that, that Jeep over there on my, on my aunt's property? And I says, yeah. And he says, that was my uncle's Jeep. And he says, uh, when I get 16, he says, I'm going to fix that Jeep up, and uh, I'm going to put a rebel flag on the back of it. I'm gonna fly it around 
And he said, because I hate, and, uh, and we all, we all know what the end bomb is. And uh, I turned to him and I got offended. You see, uh, see, something different happened with me when they when they indoctrinated me with these racist jokes. Uh, is uh, I didn't grow up in Whiteville, right? My parents, uh, as you've already figured out by now, were very interesting people. We moved around a lot, and so uh, I, I don't mean nothing bad by this statement, but I went out to find out if it was true. None of it is. Not not one bit of it. There's not there's not one racist joke that I can that I can say that I've ever heard that that, that ever fits anything. Uh, and and what bothers me probably the most, the reason why I bring it up and the reason why I bring it up like this is because I think that racism is a white problem. Okay, and the reason I say that is is because uh, when I have encountered black people that were uh, racist against Hispanic people uh, or the or the Latino community. Uh, they use uh, white racist jokes to make fun of them. And whenever I encounter a member of the Hispanic or Latino community uh, that's racist uh, against black people, I find that they use white racist jokes to talk crap about black people, right? So the only, and, and, and I prove that because I say uh, tell me a white racist joke. Tell me, tell me an anti-white racist joke. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, that, and I'm not trying to be rude with you either. But like, the idea that the white man has a small package. I mean, you know, uh, all I can say about that is uh, I'm happy with mine, and so is my wife. Uh, so I don't see no, I don't see no harm in that one. Um, but. Uh, the reason I say all this is, uh, so I said to my cousin Aaron, I got, I got mad. It's like I said, I, I had already, already proven to myself these things, these things ain't real. And uh, I said, now you, you say, you say you hate, you know, the M bomb. And I say, have you ever, have you ever met one, right? Have you ever had a conversation with a person of color or a person of any other color but your own? Right? And my cousin grew up in Whiteville, right? Man, he's capital of the world. <laughs> Not really, you, you, you get me. I saw says, uh, I says, have you, have you ever walked into a culture that the dominant skin color is not your own and tried to be respectful at all, so much as one iota, like, at all, right? And he, he went and told his daddy. After that, I was, uh, I was his own. I mean, that's fine with me, baby. Um, I know who my family is. My family is mankind, and they come in all shapes, forms, and beautiful colors. Uh, but my second one where I stood up to racism would be, uh, I was telling my buddy John about prison and I says, uh, I says, do you, do you know what prison is dominantly full of? And he cut right in and he says, black people. And, uh, like I wanted to hang up, right? And, uh, and I was disgusted. So it took me a second to respond. And uh, I said, uh, I said, no. I says, uh, I says, and you should be ashamed for thinking like that, John. Um, but no, I says, uh, I says, prison, and this, this is a fact, y'all, y'all check this out. It don't matter the color. Prison is, uh, is predominantly full of veterans, by the way. Uh, see, you guys put a machine gun in an 18-year-old's hand and send them off somewhere, him or her, excuse me, off somewhere. And when they come back, don't everybody come back the same. And uh, y'all haven't figured out how to deal with us. When I say us, I mean people that have been in prison. Um, and so what y'all do is when y'all send a person to prison, what, what you do is you uh, symbolically kill them for a period of time. They're no longer your problem. Or you stacking them all on top of each other in prison. Prison's full of veterans people who fought for your freedom, by the way. 
Um, but I had to stop myself and I told John and, and, and I'll tell you, uh, I'm not the proper person to ask that question to see, uh, like I told him, I'll tell you, uh, I could be the only snowflake on the yard. Okay. The whole, the whole thing could look like a pot of coffee. All right. You wouldn't. Okay. And me be the only, be the only, only, only snowflake on the yard. Okay. And, uh, Unless you point it out to me, it never, it never dawn on me. Um, if I happen to notice anything, I might look up and say, hmm, not a lot of white people on the yard. And quite honestly, that makes me feel better, but, but that's, that's <laughs> not, not make me feel better to be telling you, but makes me feel better to be knowing that they didn't have many white people on the yard. I judge it's, uh, Anyways, we, we ain't going to go down that path. Uh, it's just, I'm interested in real people and real truthful people who come at you with their heart. And uh, I am much more comfortable when there are not white people on the yard. I'll put it that way. Um, and so, uh, so bring me back to Yemiya here, Miss Yemiya. Um, when I went back to get her statue, uh, there was a lady, there was a black lady, and she was there. And uh, I didn't but ever, like, look at her out of the corner of my eye. You know, I la look over a little bit. That, that's about it. But she was laughing. She was just constantly laughing. And I want to tell you that she was wearing white. But... Uh, I believe I believe she might have been wearing the white and blue. I'm not exactly sure. And uh, never seen her there again since. And she was just she's just giggling the whole time. Just a, just the biggest soulful giggle you could ever you ever heard. And uh, I never looked directly at her. Cause I knew what I had to do, and I went and I got my I went and got Missy Mayan. I you know, put her up there on the counter, and I, I never saw that woman again. If you look into Miss Yumiyaya, you'll find that people encounter her when she comes into their life. And, and I, believe, I believe that happened there. But, um, but me and, me and Miss Yumiyaya, uh, as part of her being up on my altar, as part of me uh, conversating with her, uh, I've come to understand two things, okay? So I, 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 I need you, I need you to hear me, okay? God is not racist, okay? So if you think that some color or, or something is, uh, is above somebody else, nah. I pray the Lord's Prayer, Mary come to me. Mary led me to Miss Yamoja. Miss Yamoja is black. God ain't racist, okay? So we can, we can get rid of that, okay? Um, the second thing is, is that God asked me to free her people. And, uh, and I'm gonna take a break to get my mind together on what I'll say to you guys. Um, but that's exactly what I intend on doing here uh, in this video. And then uh, I intend on eliminating racism altogether in my next video. So but I'm going to take a pause real fast. And uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. So. <clears throat> we're going to turn this thing around here in a minute. And I'm going to use Google to show to you what it is I'm saying to you. But first, we're going to get it on the whiteboard that way. Because I have a hard time remembering things sometimes. That way we can get it all in line in order. The way I can go and prove it afterwards. And, and, and it'll all make sense. So. Miss Yemiya here. And I, we, con we conversated back and forth. And, uh, here at my altar. And, uh. She re reveals something to me that, that's gone. It's gone. Oh, you socks off. All right. 
so uh and i don't want to give it away at first because otherwise people just click off and you need to hear this <laughs> So, Miss Yemiya here, she made me promise to free her people, okay? Now, uh, sorry, um, Miss Yemiya's people are black, okay? So it says, uh, how would I do that? Um, I'd do anything you give me the ability to do, but, uh, You'd have to take me back in time for me to stop everything that had happened. And uh, she, she, she didn't respond to that. And uh, when, when we would talk, she helped me understand something. And uh, I pray and I hope not for me, but for you, uh, the, the black people, the black community, uh, that I do set you free. That this, this is. Uh, enough to uh to do that between this video and the next one i'm about to give you but the next one i'm about to give you frees all cultures uh the black people have been abused for a long time and continue to be uh never went away and uh, i don't know this will make it go away but i i hope it does I hope it does something so miss jimmy Oz, people are black black well the first time I want to get into that and I want you to understand why I, I say the word black when I refer to black people and why, why uh, uh, here soon I'm about to be changing that but I'm gonna be using a word that uh, you guys won't otherwise understand unless I explain this okay so uh, so I refuse I'm sorry, uh, I refuse to use the term African-American. Um, it's not true, okay? Do you understand? Uh, the majority of black people that you will meet on the street have neither seen hide in the hair of Africa. Uh, they were, they're, they're black Americans, number one. Uh, number two, uh, Chances are, not, not, not in all cases, but chances are, they don't even have close relatives that have ever been anywhere to see and hide in their hair of Africa. Do you understand? So they're not African Americans. And I want to clarify this, and I want you to understand why this gets me a little bit going here. And that's this right here. See, when you say the term African American, we got ourselves a debacle here. You see, Africa is a country. America is a country. So when you say the word African-American, you imply dual nationality. Now, this is called nationalism, and I understand that. But when you see somebody, uh, rather, rather you exist in China, and you meet somebody who is from another country, right? Uh, or rather you exist in America, and you meet somebody from another country, uh, do you not consider them, I don't want to say second class or second rate, because I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't, I don't even see that, but, um, but do you not consider them as, uh, originally one football team, and now they switched over to the other, right, you get me, right, uh, so, when you imply that, you're wrong, okay, truth be told, when they went to sign the Declaration of Independence, they probably did it on the table, that was built by a black person, okay? <laughs> um, you, 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 these, these, these individuals, they were born here in America. They are Americans, okay? And if you have to identify them by skin color or national or, or, or whatever, or race, uh, then you should identify them as black. But see, technically, I don't even think that that's the right name for black people. And, uh, I know that uh, I, I don't. I don't think that I should be the shaved head white boy to name the black people, but but I I, I learned something that I want to give to you, and you guys decide what y'all want to do with it, okay? But but it, it it 
settles a lot, okay? So, uh, you guys should not be called black. You guys should not be called any derogatory name in any way, shape, or form. There's no reason for you to own that because your people are smart and uh, and beyond any any racist joke that I've ever heard. So, uh, but there's there's a name that goes along with that that uh, that says all that, and uh, and it's important, and it's because something was stolen from the black community that uh, I'm assuming up to the time of you watching this video has never been revealed so here we go um where do black people come from right and i'm not talking about africa i'm talking about what is the land that black people come from now now what's so funny what what, what bothers the ever-loving crap out of me about this even as i say it is uh is i mean it's even in, in this, okay? Uh, black people have no land, okay? They, there is no promised land for the black people. Um, there, there, there is, okay? You, you will, you will figure that out. You've been, you've been fooled and deceived, but, but you, you, you'll figure that out. Uh, but is, is, is the black race, the black people, that even in their own country, even even black Americans, uh, do they not feel like a stranger in their own land? Is that not how they've been treated, right? Where where is where is the home of black people? I ask you that, okay? And the answer is uh, Kemet. K E M E T. Okay. Like I explained to you, I'm not a very intelligent person. Okay, so I can't. Uh, what's called epitomology or whatever where you break down the words and what they mean and all that stuff. I can't like break this all down for you, but uh, I know that chem stands for black and So the et must stand for land. It literally is in the name black land Okay, and Kemet Okay Separated into what is known as at least I believe and I, that's why I'm gonna use Google later to, to see if I'm right or wrong uh, separate later into upper and lower Egypt. Get me? Okay. So Egypt is the land of the black people, but it was not known as Egypt at the time that it was built. And that's the important thing. Okay is that the very hands that built the pyramids when they, when they went like this, they were black. Okay, that's important for you to understand. So I propose uh, to close this part out. And like I said, I don't know that I should be the white man's name, the black people. I, I leave that up to y'all. Y'all y'all do what y'all want, okay? But I propose that instead of calling y'all selves black, or instead of African American, because that implies dual nationality, I propose propose promote. I propose that you guys call yourself Commission, okay? And that's because that's the land that you guys originally came from. And I know that uh, that might sound its own way, but bear with me on this. This is important. Them hands that built that pyramids, or, or them pyramids, because there's three of them. They were black, okay? And specifically they were commissioned because the Khmer, the the pyramids the pyramids were in Kemet Kemet separated into upper and lower Egypt okay they were commissioned hands that built the pyramids they were black okay they had civilization they had mathematics they had writing they had intelligence okay what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful starting for mankind. And here's the reason why I want to say starting for mankind. I, I don't uh, subscribe to the theory that we came from monkeys. And damn sure don't subscribe to any sort of theory that says that black people walked out of Africa. And that that's how you explain 
the uh, the different races. I don't subscribe. I don't subscribe to that either. Okay, I don't have a full fledged uh, understanding as to where the other races came from, but I can one hundred percent, at least as far as I'm concerned, and in this film, I will explain to you where the white people come from because it, it, it'll all make sense to you when I do. Um, uh, and why peop the white people are in the place that they are right now, and you, you'll you'll figure that out. So. I propose that we from now on call black people Commission, not African, Commission, okay? African American implies dual nationality. Do you want to call them a Commission American? That works. I mean, because the only way for you to think about that in any way, shape, or form is to put it back to the idea that that's right. Them black hands, baby, they built the pyramids, okay? They were sophisticated before anybody else was sophisticated. In fact, when the Roman Empire came in to invade Egypt, Egypt had fallen from what it was with Akhenaten. Okay? Are you, are you with me? Okay? So, empires rise and fall. Well, the rise of the empire, the rise of the black skin, black, black race, the, the, the rise of them was uh, Kemet, okay? And they became Egypt afterwards, okay? Because um, they divided. Uh, thank due to gods, but I, I don't know that. Again, I'm not a very intelligent person. I just, I put this together and I conversate with God and this is where I come with. So, I want to ask you something. Now, uh, so to speak, and I'm sorry to put this out there, in a way, I'm sorry to put this out there, um, because I would imagine it would be very offensive uh, for a person of other color to walk into a church and see a white Jesus, okay? I, I think that in its own way, I think that that crucifix and that cross and that man sitting on that cross, I think it serves several things. One of them is that the Roman Empire won, and, and I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, because you are literally worshipping the idol of the Roman Empire killing the Son of Jesus. Or killing the Son of Jesus. Killing the Son of God. Okay. But, uh, number two, uh, Jesus was never a Greco-Roman hippie dude. Right? The, no. Okay. And I want to get into that right here, right now. So, First and foremost, Jesus, at the very least, would have had to have been a Jew, right? Because the prophecy wasn't about Roman, Re Roman, Re Roman Greco people. The prophecy was about Jewish people. But see, that's where uh, Miss Yemaya helped me to understand something that I want to point out to you. See, if you go in the Bible, you will find that where did the Jewish religion come from? Where did it come from? They were slaves of who? They were slaves of the Egyptians in the Bible. But what you don't know, or what the average individual doesn't know, is that there was a land before Egypt, and it was Kemet, and they were Kemetian. And so the Jews were slaves of the black people. The Jews were slaves of the Commissions. Do you understand? Okay. So when the Jews left Egypt, okay, what happens is, is that the, um, the, uh, the, the gods, the deities, the parts of worship that were in Commission culture that had been handed all the way down into Egypt, okay, uh, the slaves, the Jews, got to see this uh, this religion and these rituals and such as that, but truthfully speaking, they only actually got to see so much of it because there would have been places that they weren't allowed, okay? Uh, which brings me uh, to my first racist word that I've ever heard uh, outside of uh, white racism, and that is Gentile, right? Were you Jewish or you a Gentile, okay? Well, the reason why that word would have come about is because the the Jewish people were experiencing, the Hebrew people were experiencing slavery, okay? 
So when they when when they when they come out, they're ornery, they're upset, they've been oppressed. Okay, but they take the religion of Egypt with them. That is why you will find that the Kabbalah, right, is about angel worship. Okay, but if we trace this back to Egypt, we find that angels, and I'll write it right here. Angel, and I always misspell angel, so please excuse me. A N G, I think it's L E. I'm gonna go with it. No, it's E L. Never looks right to me. Oh no. Okay. Angel equal, ready for this? Now I'll spell it real big for you right here. Net N E T. Uh, I probably misspelled it. That's who them bad boys are. The Netaru. Okay? You've heard of them. Uh, you've heard of uh, Anubis. You've heard of uh, the Netaru. Okay? The, the, the peoples that the Kamishans uh, worshipped. Now, I haven't gotten into Kamishan worship yet. So I don't 100% know. Uh, I haven't gotten into Orisha worship yet because, uh, like I say, they, they kind of spook me, but they come to me in a nurturing fashion. And, and so, um, but I haven't gotten into the Netaru. But I guarantee you the Netaru 100% correspond with the angels of the Jewish faith and the angels, therefore, of the Catholic religion. Okay, number one. Um, number two, uh, God's chosen people. Who are they? Who are God's chosen people? Here's where we get controversial. They are black, baby. Oh, yeah. That's right. They're black. God's chosen people were commissioned. Okay? Because, again, not only was the prophecy not about Greco-Roman people, but the prophecy wasn't about Jewish or Hebrew people either. It was about Egyptians or commissions. Do you understand? Okay? So, uh... I hate that I'm giving you the keys to unlock yourself from bondage just to tell you that uh, your religion has already died, but, uh, but this is the truth of the matter, okay? So first coming to Jesus, who would Jesus have been? Jesus, yeah, I'll put it over here. Jesus would have been Enoch. E-N-O-C-H. How do I know that? Because Enoch walked with God all of his days. Enoch was transfigured and transcended into heaven in his bodily form. Okay? And Enoch was transfigured and transformed into an angel. Enoch, not... I promised you that all the pictures that I find uh, of Enoch, Enoch is black. Um... But then when I go find pictures uh, later, I find somewhere he's white. So um, I don't know where I came to the understanding that Enoch was black, but 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 Enoch was black, okay. Um, was was transfigured and transcribed into the heavens. So so Jesus Jesus walked the earth, okay. First first and foremost. His name would not have been Jesus. The J did not exist. So his name would have been Jesus or, or Yeshua, right? Um, however, though, his name was not that either. His name was Enoch. And he, he has been here. And he traveled the world. And he had a lot of things to say. And you can go check that out for yourself. And his name is Enoch. However, though, uh, and this is the other part that I'm going to use Google for. Um, and this is, this is the part where I'm sad because... In the telling of the story of the Romans killing Jesus, who I'm telling you was Enoch, and the Romans never had nothing to do with crap, okay? Uh, 
version of that actually did happen okay and uh i'm again i'm going to use google to confirm this because i don't know this 100 percent, but I'm, I'm i'm afraid i'm right and i won't know 100 percent, so i look it up um but uh the second coming of the messiah has already happened and uh and we've already killed him and by we i mean white because the man who killed this person uh, was white and uh i want to tell you what that person's name was right now um he was a uh, intelligent man so his name starts with doctor his first name is martin And I don't know if the Luther's the middle or or the middle or the end part, but Luther King. Junior. That was the the name of the second Messiah. Uh, he's he's already come here and uh, and in line. Um he was black. Uh, he spoke about equality. Um, I'm very interested because uh, the rainbow has taken on many, uh, many banners, many things uh, throughout time. And uh, I remember that uh, rainbow used to simply mean celebrate diversity. And I'm wondering if they carried a rainbow flag in the uh, Million Man March, and I'm wondering if uh, Martin Luther King was part of that. Um, I'm interested, uh, but I'll let you guys find out for yourselves. I'm interested if uh, when they talk about uh, Jesus coming down on a city and, uh, with rainbow, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see him in the sky with rainbow. Um, I wonder if the very same prophecies in the Bible about Jesus coming um, weren't actually fulfilled by this man. Um, but uh, but white people killed him. Um, now, uh, what you call it, the part that I wanted to get to here is, is that which you also notice, okay, and, and I just, I, I, I can't make it up, okay, you, you, we've all went through school, we've all been taught things, obviously I didn't retain as much, because I would know about the Million Man March and, and these things, but, um, had a different childhood than you, hopefully, uh, but we noticed that right there, well, I think you see it, you notice it says king? You know, he had king in his name. Okay? And the, uh, the only other thing I give you, um, about, uh, about all that is that there's, there's no need to worry and you guys can I'm sure there will be an ending of the world or an apocalypse at some point in time, but it, it'll have nothing to do with Christianity. It, it'll be in some other form. Um, reason, reason I tell you that is, uh, what you call it. So luckily there are multiple gods because if there weren't, we would already be dead because we already killed them. It already happened. Okay. Um, but I want you to see the proof that I have for why it is, okay, now we're going to just erase Upper and Lower Egypt, we'll keep the Nataru and all that right there, okay, and I'm very sad and I'm very sorry to tell you guys this, but, um, but I can't make these statements and not give you guys proof, so, um, so I want to give you proof in... And I'm sorry, uh, 
I want you to, we'll, we'll go through a couple of things, but, but, uh, but I'm sorry that this has happened. The point is, is that we address it now, we acknowledge it now, and we move forward. So first and foremost, uh, if you are a white supremacist and you consider yourself to be Christian, you got to find something else to be, brother, because uh, it, 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 it don't it don't work that way, homie. Uh, you need you need to, number one, figure out that all people are equal. And number two, you need to understand that the very religion that you're busy worshiping is a religion that your ancestors stole from the black people. And that uh, what each and every one of you ought to do is take your Jesus down and paint him black and then put him back up. That's why I told two Jehovah Witnesses that come to the door the other day. Uh, I say you do that and I might show up just to hear what you guys say. Okay, because Jesus was black. Uh, or Enoch. Um, but uh, there's, a, there's a reason. Uh, and I want to I wanna really point this out to you guys real fast. That the... Uh, the black history was stolen and, and there's there's a uh, there's a uh, there's a reason it's been kept from you and there's a reason why it's been allowed for it to be the Jewish people been told that was the uh, chosen people of God they're not it's black um, and that is to take away from the fact that it's only the black race that has been without a home do you understand um, that where where is their promised land where where is their promised land huh? uh, and so uh, and so I wish to prove that to you by, by number one proving the theft of the uh, of the uh, commission culture I'm, I'm so sorry y'all um, so at Washington DC and at the uh, at the Vatican in Rome, what do we have? We have something like this, right? This phallus shape, and we call it an obelisk, right? So why uh, why is there an obelisk sitting in Rome, in Vatican City, and an obelisk sitting in Washington D.C.? Well. The Freemasons are the ones who founded America, so we understand they would have taken over the knowledge that they had from ancient Greece and ancient Rome and found this new empire, right? Uh, so we see that the number one thing they took over was obviously the truth, because I'm telling you this is the truth, but it is a black truth, okay? Um, what you call it, uh, so they, they, they let you know in that okay they were they were separating from the queen but they, they were also separating from the catholic church okay uh, but they let you know that they, they 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 took they took the truth with them and they put it uh monument washington dc okay now why would uh why is this sitting here uh it's sitting there in in, in rome uh because now i want y'all to understand this Okay, so when the Jewish Hebrew people left Egypt, Upper Lower Egypt, whatever, uh, or ancient Kamesha, where did they go to? They went from Egypt all the way over to, oh, wait, that's right, the people with the biggest stick in the world. They were called the Romans at that time. Right, they were busy taking things over. Okay, so the, these people, they made it through the the sea and the parting of the waves and all that stuff, and they made it all the way through here through the desert and all that stuff, and lo and behold, they come straight into play with the Romans. Right, with do the little do 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 do, and then you have the, do, the little Roman little head thing. Right, okay, the Romans. Well, the first thing they would have said is. Brother, please don't enslave. We 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 just we just we just left that, right? And we've been through all this stuff. Look, please don't enslave me. Um, do you like gold? Uh, do you like rubies and, and nice stuff? Uh, right. That's when whoever this person would have been, right? So 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 Judas, right? Uh, 
would have sold out the children of God for gold. Okay? Um, and they would have led the Romans all the way back down from wherever the Jews encountered the Romans at, right? All the way back down to, and I'm going to call it Kemet. Uh, instead of Egypt, because the point is, is that the people that existed there before uh, Kemet broke into Upper and Lower Egypt, uh, they they had an advanced civilization in order for them hands to have built that pyramid, number one. And number two, you happen to know about part of it, and that's this right here. Now, I've always been um, obsessed with the Tower of Babel, right? How does a tower falling over cause the distortion of languages, right? And uh, and how does uh, how does it how does that work? And my answer to you is the Tower of Babel was uh, the Tower of Alexandria, and when it got pushed over into the lake, it had documents and recordings in it. Now, were all of those documents and recordings taken out of Kemet? And taken over to the Vatican in Rome. I don't know, but I know for a fact that they pushed, they pushed that, they pushed. It's recorded. They pushed that tower, the Tower of Alexandria, into that body of water, whatever that body of water is, right there. Okay. Now, uh, why would why would that distort the languages and confuse the people? Well, I think it would distort the languages and confuse the people because number one, I think that it said that number one, black people came first. But number two, that the black civilization was a civilization at one point in time that would have been uh, probably if they if if they could move pyramids and the Romans never Romans or, or Greeks never figured out how to then uh, obviously surpass the Roman Empire. But when one empire takes over another empire, it takes over its gods, it takes over its history, and I'm about to prove that to you here real fast. So. I want to ask you a question. So now, now, now here I am, right? I'm I'm trying to make it on YouTube, right? Uh, trying. I want I want this to be my full time job. Is what I'd love to do, right? Because I, I got this constant. Um. But uh. But let me ask you something. Okay. When in life. Has it ever been acceptable for a man to walk up to a woman and say, Hey, baby, don't worry, right? I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a, an artist, right? And I'm going to make it and we're going to be good. And you're going to turn around and then you're going to go tell your, your father or whoever, right? Oh, don't worry. He's going to be, he says, Hey, baby, I'm going to be an artist. We're going to be good, Right? When has that ever worked? When has when has it ever been that the father or the whatever the the adult figure of the household whatever would turn around and say, "Nice, you got a good catch, right?" And the answer is there was a time, and that was the Roman Greco Empire, right? Uh, so the Romans were uh, were based on war and, and conquering things, and they would bring things back. And the Greeks were based on the philosophy. They, the Greeks were based on figuring things out that they brought back. So there was at one point in time, there was a spot in Rome where you could walk down and you would have seen a, uh, an altar and a temple to every god that was ever created um, or was ever found out to be, okay? And they ended up tearing all that down and they, they ended up tearing all that down and forming the, uh, the Catholic Church and eventually the uh, Catholicism branches off into Christianity. So a lot of people would say, well, no, because Christianity is the teachings of Jesus, but, but we... You check out Enoch. Um, but uh, but what I say here is, is that the reason for that is, and I want you to think about this, that you can study religion or you can study philosophy, right? But this dude that's been pictured going like this on a toilet, right? Uh, I say to you, and I apologize for cussing, but I say to you, uh, he took shits before he stood for that statue and he took shits afterwards. What was it that made him the big shit, right? 
And what made him the big shit was he went to Egypt or Kemet, okay? And you'll actually find that all of the ancient philosophers all went to Egypt, which is what they called it, but it was Kemet originally, okay? You with me? You following me so far? So when we, uh, uh, when we look at it from this perspective and we look at it from this narrative that all of a sudden it became a good thing to be an artist or a sculptor, right? I want to point something out to you. Okay. Now, and, and part of the, part of this ain't gonna jive exactly with you, but but when you when you put it all together, it'll it, it'll fit. So, uh, so like I say, uh, I've never had an STD. Uh, I never caught any disease. I never used needles. Uh, I've crammed everything up my nose I possibly could, and I smoked everything I possibly could. It's just, you know. Uh, very few things are left off the list. Uh, I've hallucinated and I've done mushrooms and LSD and uh, I, uh, I've i seen just about everything. Or, you know, at least in the scope of imagination. I have yet to see a halo, right? I always thought about that, a halo. Now, they, they, they you know, there's the idea that maybe it could be the Shekinah glory shining behind somebody or... Maybe that's Kundalini. I don't. I don't know. Um, but but a halo. I've never seen a halo. And then it dawned on me one day that uh, that I have seen halos and that I've seen them often. I've seen them through the majority of my life, and I want to point that out to you. Now, if the Roman people went down to ancient Kemet and wanted it to make it look like they built that and like that was their civilization and that was their empire right the number one okay and, and i'm sorry to point these things out. i mean nothing racist or anything bad in any way shape or form if you look at this from a scientific perspective you'll see exactly what i'm talking about number one if you look up any of the pyramids and any of the writing is on the walls inside there uh those those uh those weren't white people number one uh, the damn sure weren't roman uh, and number two, uh, you have to chisel the nose off the sphinx in order for it to be able to, in any way, shape, or form, re uh, look like a Roman nose as opposed to a Commission nose. Are you following me? Okay. But if you look at the facial features and you look at the people and you look at the way that they're drawn, clear as day, uh, they are they are Commission. However, uh, so they weren't able to succeed, but. And there are certain places, okay, where there are angels depicted there, right? Okay, so so we back to the Neturu, right? But, but, but there are angels depicted, okay? And I want to point something out to you. Now, I've never seen a halo around somebody's head until I realized. If we had a person walking down the street right now, some beautiful person with a big, ginormous gorgeous afro right uh, I, like I said I know this is probably going to be a little off to you bear with me and I walk up to him with my LED flashlight and I say hey dude uh, brother sister right um, do me a favor I'm going to shine my light at the back of your head okay so right here I know this is all weird bear with me shine my light at the back of your head right here and I want you to take a selfie Right? What would we see? We would see the light shining through this afro. Okay? The word is not halo. The word is afro. Do you get me? If I take a picture of a black man or a black woman with an afro and I tried to cover it up and make it look like it was white people instead. If I do it with today's technology, you know, whatever, but, but if I do it with ancient times as the Romans would have had and so on, then I put a little white face here in the middle and I turn this right here. The only way I can cover up that hair is a halo. Do you get me? So they were commissioned. Because the sons of God 
right angels in the way that we're right right in the bible right so i'm not saying the bible is a lie i'm saying that the bible is commission truth that has been handed down to you by the romans okay so the they went and they studied the commissions you can look at them like like i say we'll, we'll, we'll check it out you know i make sure that i put some stuff up here that way you can see it but you can look it up there was a whole Tons and tons and tons of money and slaves and servants and all this stuff. And all these people going down there to Egypt or Kemet. For what reason? They, they, they were studying. Okay. They come together in the Council of Nicaea and put together the Bible. Okay. They made sure that they, they tried to in encompass all these things to include Enoch. Okay. And then they thought that the one thing that they could do is make themselves look more powerful than God by killing off God's only begotten son. And that's what you have the crucifix for. But I don't see the other side of it is, is I, like I say, I don't, it's so number one, Romans never killed the son of God. Uh, uh, but number two, uh, when I look at the crucifix, when I look at Jesus on the cross, I see a man who is clear as day. Uh, now, granted, he's got spikes to his hands and, and, and the crown of thorns on his head. And I get that. But it looks as if somebody who would be practicing yoga. It, it looks as if it's all representative there. There's the chakras and alignment and, and so on and what for. I just, I see that when I look at it. I, I, I don't know why. But I'm going to tell you right here, right now, brothers and sisters, if you turn your hand right here, right now, and you look at your skin and it's black, okay? And you look up here. And you see this, what what is supposed to represent, I just apologize about my drawing, but what was supposed to represent light coming through an afro to represent a halo. I want you to understand, uh, you, you, are, you are God's chosen people. Black people, commissions are God's chosen people. And I'd, I'd ask you, uh, I'd ask you to, you know, consider maybe, uh, maybe us calling black people commission people because it's the only thing that really actually gives them respect. They, they have this big empire, and it was so important that the Romans spent all their money going back down to it, and we're still worshiping it today with the Catholic Church. They took all the knowledge from the, the, the library, the Tower of Alexandria, which was probably a free library for anybody to go and learn at, which is why they went down and learned, right? And they destroyed everything, okay, and took it for themselves. It told you that Jesus is white. Jesus ain't white. Jesus is black, right? His name was Enoch. He was, he walked with God. He was ascended to the heavens in bodily flesh and he was transfigurated. Okay. They meshed all these stories to make it so that, see, when you, again, like I say, when you sit down in front of a crucifix of Jesus, you are worshiping the fact that the Roman Catholic church or the, not the Roman Catholic, but the, the, the Roman empire killed Jesus. Do, do you, do you, you worship the fact that he died on the cross? It, it's, it's ingrained in you that rome rules do, do you get me so uh so i want to i want to take this just a just a couple steps further here real fast and we'll, we'll switch this thing around we'll get over to the evidence uh but the uh, uh the other thing i want to say to you is is uh, i told you i can tell you where white people come from and that's this right here this is the reason why i know the bible is real now uh i want to explain to you why why this is written this way in the bible that way you can understand okay so uh in kemet there was and i don't i don't i don't know their commission names okay but uh in because there was instead of uh uh oh goodness instead of isis her name was uh do, 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 do. Why is it not coming to me right now? Her name was Aset. Uh, uh, instead of uh, Osiris, his name was Osar. And instead of Horus, his name was something else. I don't know why I can't think of that right now off the top of my head. It, like the second I turn the camera off, it would pop in my head. But I'm not going to dwell on that because we're going to use what you're used to hearing. So we're going to say Isis. Uh, Osiris and then there was also uh, God of Chaos 
hold on, there was Neath and Set. So if you look up the beginning story of the of the of the Egyptian peoples, okay? If you look up the beginning story of the Egyptian peoples, you will find that there were a set of twins or or not twins, but there, there was it was two boys and two girls that were born to the world. And their names were Isis, Osiris, Neith, and Set, okay? And they they it's ancient times, okay? Uh they ended up becoming couples. Isis and Osiris became a bonded couple, and Neith and Set became a bonded couple, except for there's only one problem, and that is that Set is the god of chaos, okay? And since Set was the god of chaos, Set could not conceive a child. So Neith tells her, tells her sister Isis that, uh, that, that she can't conceive a child with, with Set, and Neith, set, uh, Neith and Isis conspire together for Osiris to lay with Neith and to create a child, okay? And uh, this infuriates Set. And so what Set ends up doing, and th this is the reason why I tell you guys that, uh, that Mother God is the Queen of Heaven and that Father God is the God of Death, is because of this right here. It, it's, it's in this story, Okay. So Set shows up to a ceremony. I don't know if it was a wedding ceremony. I don't know if we were just getting together and, and hanging out. I, I don't know what, right? But he shows up to a ceremony and brings his brother a gift, okay? And what does he bring his brother? He brings his brother a coffin, okay? Well, now, Osiris later becomes uh, the god of death. But I propose to you that Osiris already was the god of death, okay? Just as Isis is already the queen of heaven. Do you understand? Um, because in order for you to show up to somebody's festive occasion and offer them a coffin, which I can't really think of much more of an insult unless you're just those people. And I mean, there's been times in my life I've been those people, so that's fine. Okay. But he offers up this coffin and he entices his brother. He says, Hey, stand inside of it and see if it fits. And he does. And he nails the coffin shut and he sends him down the Nile. Osiris dies inside the coffin but Isis goes to uh, goes to find them. When Set figures this out, Set cuts up Osiris, distributes parts of his body. The only part that uh, that Isis cannot find to bring back Osiris is uh, is his phallus, and that'd be represented right here by the uh, oh uh, uh, by the obelisk. Anyways, uh, so she creates a golden phallus, and they conceive a son, which is Horus. Okay. Now, the reason I say that I can tell you where white people come from is because this right here is because if you look at the Bible and you look at the story that you don't understand that I'm referring to, you find Cain and Abel. OK, and you will find that in the story of Cain and Abel, where one brother kills another brother. OK, as God revealed to me, Cain never killed Abel. That's how that's how I figured this out. It wasn't Cain that killed Abel. It was uh it was Set who killed Osiris. Okay, do you understand? But as a result, uh, God Almighty, um, uh, he punished Cain. And what was it that he punished Cain with? He said, uh, uh, what, what, what he punished Cain with, Cain came back and said, please do not, he punished him with the mark of Cain. He, uh, Cain came back and said, please do not punish me for everybody will be able to see me. Now we we've already went over quite a few topics that are that that are make a person's blood pressure rise and whatever. I don't really think this should be that bad, but but, but here we go, right? Uh, so first and foremost, and I'm sorry to put it this way, I'm sorry to say it this way. If you are any color other than white, you blend in with your environment, and I don't mean nothing bad by it. I just we talk in science here, okay? Now I'm a white boy, right? And I live in Alaska. I don't see much sunlight. You see this whiteboard? Do I blend with white at all? Now I can get you paper. I can get you trash bags. I can go outside in the snow. If I put my hand up to the color white, do you know what my skin looks like? My skin looks red, like blood, like the blood that Cain spilled when he killed Abel. So white people in in my opinion and this is just my opinion i can't prove this i don't know this but in white in my opinion white people come from the lineage of cain 
That's that's why we don't blend with our environment. That's why Cain came back and said, everybody will see me and they will kill me. Or when you're journeying through roads and passageways in ancient times, you don't want people to be able to see you. That's why I bring up the blending with your environment. You get me? So uh, so our next step here is I'm going to flip you guys around. And uh, and we're going we're gonna to use Google to prove up everything that I just said in front of you. Uh, and we'll get this thing going. Now, folks, with the help of my friend Google, we're going to go through and we're going to confirm everything I just said. So, first off, give me a Okay. There are many different transliterations in other languages of the mother. Major uh, water spirit of the Yoruba religion. So, the Yoruba religion, something you should check out. I can't speak very much about any of this because I, 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 don't, I don't know this myself personally, so I'm not going to go out and let them speak here. But, uh, nonetheless, Yamoja, Yamaya. There's many different literations, okay, but she is the major water spirit from the Yoruba religion. So if you wanted to check that person out, the deity I showed you there, I'll put her back on her little spot here. Okay. So then you could you could check that out. Next one is Obelisk. <coughs> so there's the Obelisk in Rome, uh, Obelisk in Center of Plaza del, you'll have to answer that, uh, known as the, I think it's Felimen Obelisk was brought to Rome by Augustine to mark the anniversary of the conquest of Egypt. In Rome, it was erected at the eastern end of the subpoena at the Circus Maximus. <coughs> so we're talking about conquest to Egypt. You can see that right there. Okay. <coughs> when Did Rome invade? And see, it's one of the it's one of the things that pops up right there too. This isn't in my looking. This is this is one of the things, one of the searches that pops up. When did Rome invade Egypt? Okay. So thirty BC. Right, so in theory, there is the, uh, oh, I know they don't mean it, but there's supposed to be like the before Christ and after death, right? You have AD, BC. Uh, so right there at 30. Hmm. Uh, Christ lived to be 33. Oh, that's interesting. I, I didn't, I'm learning these things as I show them to you. So I, I, I didn't, I'm just putting this together just out loud. Um, Rome's rule over Egypt officially began with the arrival of Octavian, later called Augustus, in 30 BC, following his defeat of Mark, Antony, and Cleopatra in the Battle of Actum. Okay. <laughs> so, then we have... Um, then we have... Sorry, trying to... The wrong tablet. Um, where did where did Jewish religion come from? The religion is rooted in the ancient Near Eastern religion of Canaan, which today constitutes Israel Palestine territories. Judaism emerged from the beliefs and practices of the people known as Israel, 
what is considered classical or rabbinical Judaism did not emerge until the first century CE. So we're so we're we're after that there 30 BC. Alright, so it says that Judaism emerged from the beliefs and practices of Israel. So where did religion come from? Okay, where did the where did the original Israelites come from? Number one, so we'll just start with that. Based on archaeological evidence, according to the modern archaeological account, the Israelites and their culture did not overtake the region by force, but instead branched out of the indigenous Canaanite peoples that long inhabited the southern Syria, ancient Israel region. Okay. Where did the original Israelites So where did the originalists of the Israelites go? Okay. Where did the original... So I, I typed this in because we're focused on the religion aspect. So it says the Israelites came out of Cana. Okay. Uh, but where did the original uh, uh, religion of the Israelites come from? The origins of Judaism lie in the Bronze Age in this polyistic, ancient, Semitic religions specifically evolving out of polytheistic ancient Canaanite religion the coexisting with Babylonian religion and element and syncretizing elements of Babylonian belief into the worship of Yahweh as reflected in the earlier prophetic so we're going to say, where did the original religion, the origins of Judaism date back over 3,500 years. The religion is rooted in the ancient Near Eastern religion of Cana, which today constitutes Israel, Palestine, territories. Okay, so. Okay. Like other people... So what were the religious practices of ancient Canaan? Uh, like other people of the ancient Near East, Canaanite religious beliefs were polytheistic. Angels, right? Natura. Okay. With, familial, with, with families typically focusing on veneration of the dead in the form of household gods and goddesses. The Elohim while acknowledging the existence of other deities such as Baal in El Ma Quos Esra and Astarte. Okay, so we're gonna look at Elohim. Because I know Elohim also means angels. And remember like I said about the Afro, it's not Halo, it's Afro. So let's let's do that. What are the religious practices of see it says what are practices of the Elohim in Bible but we go to Elohim so the Elohim in Raylan religion according to the Raylan movement the Elohim are a human like alien race that created life through scientific purposes on earth so the interesting thing and, and, and I have known partially about uh, that um, the interesting thing would be that uh, if you look up um, the ancient Sumerians and you look up uh, and, and I probably will hear later on the channel uh, their gods and what, what they had to say and such as that it was as if they had came from another planet to come here and so uh, just so we're clear that would be the uh, that would be the commissions what I'm calling the, the black people that's 
that's what uh, that's that's what that would be. That would be the commissions. Okay, the commissions would have uh, thereby been the Elohim. If you're following me so far, uh, but uh, the religion, religion beliefs and practices, Elohim, Mormonism, the Mormon Church beliefs. Okay, so. And I saw the one that said the seven Elohim, which I would imagine has to do with the seven archangels, but I don't know. It's generally thought that Elohim is derived from Eloah, the later being an expanded form of the Northwest Semitic noun, Il. Uh, the related nouns, Eloah, are used as proper names or as generics, in which case, interchangeable with Elohim. Well, that's right. So, so Elohim means multiple, so it can't, it can't be the Elohim be, be God, but, um, Elohim is thus a plural construct powers. Hebrew grammar allows for this noun to mean he is the power, singular, overpowers, plural, just as the word means owner, he is Lord. So, I went about this the wrong way, my bad. Where, because it said Hebrew there, if you, if you were able to see that. It says, uh... So we have Jews and we have Hebrew. Jews and Hebrew. Okay. So we're going to say where did the origins of Judaism hmm. So we're saying that so Cana and Israel and all that that would have been the the spot that they went out into after after they escaped Egypt on, on and eventually ran into the Romans. Uh, the people on it is Israel. So we say. Hebrew come from what is the Hebrew faith called okay so the Hebrew faith itself is called uh, Judaism okay uh, the first of the oldest of three great monotheistic faiths is the religion and way of life of the Jewish people the basic laws and tenets of Judaism derived from the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Okay. So, where did the Hebrew people come from? Where did the Hebrew... Where did the Hebrew people come from? According to the Old Testament, the Hebrews wandered the desert in Sinai, which is between Egypt and Canaan for 40 years. Okay, so Egypt and Canaan are literally so close to each other that there's just a desert between them. Um, well, here we go, let's do this. The Egyptians reject God, but the Hebrews embrace him, Exodus tells us. And when the Israelites saw the almighty hand of Yahweh displayed, the Egyptians instead of the Hebrews. Why did the why did Egypt enslave Hebrews? The Israelites have been the Israelites had been in Egypt for generations, but now that they had become so numerous, the Pharaoh feared the presence or feared their presence. He feared that one day the Israelites would turn against the Egyptians. Gradually and selfie, he forced them to become his slaves. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't sound like there's a whole lot to that, but okay. Uh, 
who have brought the Jews to Egypt in the Bible. As early as the 3rd century BCE, before Common Era, uh, there was a widespread dysphoria of yeah, widespread diasporia of Jews in many Egyptian towns and cities. In Josephus' history, it is claimed that after the first I can't, I can't say that. Jude, Judea he led some 12,000 Jewish captives to Egypt from the areas of Judea, Jerusalem. Okay. So, Hebrew people labored, Hebrew people labored in droves to build the spectacular pyramids because the slaves were an invaluable workforce. It was the state's best interest to keep them alive, but they were made very much aware who wielded the power. Hmm. Why is Moses not mentioning Egyptian history? What happened to Egypt? What happened to the Hebrews left? What happened to Egypt after the Hebrews left? The Bible tells us that when the Israelites left Egypt, they plundered the Egyptians. That is, they took most of the wealth of land, silver, gold, clothing with them in modern times it seems roughly equivalent to the sudden loss of everyone's lifetime savings. So, rather the, even though, even though there was the talk on here about the Romans uh, conquering and the conquest of of Egypt okay it says right here that the Bible tells us that when the Israelites left Egypt they plundered the Egyptians so so the so the Israelites supposedly migrating with with all this um, plundered the Egyptians that is they took most of the wealth of the land silver gold and clothing with them in modern times this terms roughly equivalent to the sudden loss of everyone's lifetime savings so they, they so they supposedly they already took it but, but there was the roman takeover of the uh roman takeover and occupation of egypt so there had to be, anyways anyways okay so but we getting there we're getting there so if uh if the Egyptians or the Israelites, so it's saying when the Bible tells us when the Israelites left Egypt. So we should look it up as when did the Israelites encounter the Romans? Encounter. When did the Romans encounter the Romans? The Roman army arrived on the shores of the Holy Land in 63 BCE, about 135 years later after the temple in Jerusalem lay in ruins in the third and most enduring explosion of the Jews from their, or expulsion of the Jews from their homeland was underway. when the Israelites were conquered. Okay, but what happened? That's the very next thing right there. What happened when the Israelites conquered the Romans? Uh, Roman General Pompey uh, 
uh, conquered Jerusalem and its surroundings in 63 BCE. The Romans disposed the ruling dynasty of Judea. Okay. Now. Did. The. In Rome, Jewish communities thrive. Jews became a significant part of the population. Egypt was a subdivision of the Roman Empire from Rome's invasion of the against the Jewish uprising. Was Egypt colonized by Rome? So we have. What happened between the Romans and the Jews? Jewish-Roman tensions resulted in several Jewish-Roman wars between the years 66 and 135 CE, which resulted in the destruction of Jerusalem and the Second Temple and the institution of Jewish tax in 70. Those who paid the tax were exempt from the obligations of making sacrifices to the Roman imperial cult. So then, essentially, what this is saying here is that uh, I, I, I misspoke on the fact that uh, the Jews led the Romans to Egypt, which technically they did. Okay, because when the Jews left the land with all the stuff from Egypt, right, they sat in their homeland for a period of time, right, before they were conquered by the Romans. And it says right here that the uh, Jewish Roman tensions resulted in several Jewish Roman wars between the years of 66 and 135 CE, which resulted in the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, of Jerusalem and the Second Temple and the institution of the Jewish tax, okay? It says right here that those who paid the Jewish tax were exempt from the obligation of making sacrifices to the Roman imperial cult, okay? So the very next thing to search up would be, we we'll just type in the words Roman imperial cult, and, uh, Egypt. Let me see what pops up. The Roman imperial cult identified emperors and some members of their families with the divinity sanctioned authority of the Roman state. Its framework was based on Roman and Greek presidents and was formulated during the early Throughout the Roman Empire, the living emperor was the subject of worship and also in part the object of a cult. Okay. Between Egyptian religion and Christianity, not similarities. <coughs> So we have right here, um, make an assumption here, uh, the paper, uh, Pharaoh Palacius, the emperor, the Roman imperial cult in Egypt, right? It says this paper approaches the historical context uh, of social and cultural interactions between Greeks and Egyptians from the... Macadamian, Macadamian, there we go, Macadamian Conquest. I'm sure that's not what that says, but. Uh, 
to the Roman rule over probably Egypt. Okay, but um, the Roman imperial cult in Egypt, it was Roman, but its regional variation allowed for different forms. In this way, we pay less attention to the center, the Egyptian form of the imperial cult. So, there's that was the, okay, what are the similarities for the Roman emperors, pharaohs? That'd be probably the next one for the purpose of the imperial cult. What was an important influence of Egyptian civilization? Uh, what was important influence of Egypt? Okay, on the emperor. So, what are the similarities between ancient Egypt and ancient Rome? Both ancient Egypt and ancient Rome used their feet and walking sticks that elderly people use when they are old and can't see far. Okay. They both used chariots and litters and also boats. They also both have funeral boats used to carry the dead person to a funeral and then back to a gravestone. Okay, well that's very interesting. Uh, what was the important influence of Egyptian civilization on the Roman Empire? We have Roman Empire, Roman emperors and citizens were also influenced by Egyptian religious ideology. So not only the, the Jewish peoples who were so the Hebrew people who became the Israelites, right? Not only were they influenced by the Jew by the Egyptians because they were uh, they were uh, enslaved by the uh, by the Egyptians, uh, but uh, but also the Romans themselves were uh, Roman Roman emperors and citizens were also influenced by Egyptian religious ideologies, the adoption of certain astrological practices by Augustus and others was one example that quickly became a part of Roman society and culture, okay? Um, they have, as I already put up, as I already mentioned to you, the obelisk of ancient Rome, okay, which was the conquest of Egypt. So they would have found out about Egypt from the Jewish peoples and then conquested there, okay? Uh, what was the purpose of the imperial cult? Were the, were the uh, emperors considered pharaohs? Though the Egyptians themselves considered the Romans to be their pharaohs and the legitimate successors of the ancient pharaohs, the emperors themselves never adopted any pharaonic titles or traditions outside of Egypt, as they would have been hard to justify in Roman world laws. So they're saying, um, I get you. They're saying, uh, what you call it? They are saying that uh, while the Romans were busy ruling Egypt, that they were, uh, they were, um, what you call it, they were uh, considered pharaohs of the people they ruled because the people they ruled were the, the Egyptians at the time. So, the next thing, I'll be back with the other section as far as, uh, Enoch, and then as far as, uh, what you call it, as far as Martin Luther King. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. So I'm saying this man right here, this was y'all's second Messiah. Y'all already killed him. See real fast. 
Martin Luther King was a American Baptist minister and activist, one of the most prominent leaders in the civil rights movement in 1955 until his assassination, assassination in 1968. Uh, what was Martin Luther King known for? Martin Luther King Jr. is a civil rights legend in the mid-50s. Martin Luther King led the movement to end segregation and counter prejudice in the United States through the means of peaceful protest. His speeches, some of the most iconic 20th century, had a profound effect on the national conscience in January. So that's when that was supposed to. Okay, what are five interesting facts about Dr. King? All right, uh, Dr. King's uh, birth name was Michael, not Martin. Uh, King entered college at age, uh, age of 15, I think. Uh, King received his doctorate in systematic theology. Uh, King's I Have a Dream speech was not his first at the Lincoln Memorial. King was uh, in prison nearly 30 times. Okay. Was. There was a brisk day in the nation's capital and King, then in his late 30s, was preparing to speak during the Million Man March on October 16th, 1995. That, what? It was a British state in the nation's capital, and King, then in his late 30s, was preparing to speak during the Million Man March on October 16th, 1995. That probably was one of the largest demonstrations of black men that had ever been done in terms of the United States being told CNN. Hold on now. So he was not alive in the Million Man March, 1965. So... Um, Organizing the march on Washington for jobs and freedom to his peaceful protest. Uh, Montgomery. Okay. March on Washington. Okay. March on Washington. I always thought that brown and black people were included in the pride flag. Oh. Let's see. So, okay. So, the first uh, rainbow flag was created in the 1970s. The Million Man March wasn't until 1995. And Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968. So Martin Luther King would have flown the divide that the, the, the rainbow flag, the diversity flag, um, in the uh, in the Million Man March. Huh. Well, there's that. Now, the other thing we have to look up is Kemet. Where is Kemet in Africa? Who is God in Kemet? What race is Kemet? Why Egypt? Uh, why was Egypt called Kemet? So, the Egyptians called the country Kemet, literally the black land. Kem, or yeah, Kem meant black. The in ancient uh, Egyptian, the name derived from the color of the rich and fertile black soil 
which was due to the annually occurring Nile in, in duration. So Kemet was the cultivated area along the Nile Valley. Okay. Uh, what race was Kemet? Um, ancient Egyptians referred to their homeland as Kemet, conventionally pronounced as Kemet. According to the something I can't pronounce, the Egyptians referred to themselves as black people or Kemet. And Kem <laughs> was the etymological root of other words such as Cam, Ham, and refer to black people in Hebrew tradition. So there's that. Okay. Who, what, who is God in Kemet? In ancient Egypt, or Kemet, as it is also known to its people at the time, one key concept was the relationship between three deities, Asar, Aset, and Haru, as I told you earlier. Um, most Americans today know them better by their, by the, by the names the Greeks gave them. Osiris, Isis, Horus, respectively. Where is Kemet in Africa? Kemet was one of the, one of the names given to Egypt by its ancient indigenous inhabitants. Uh, in a modern context, the term Kemet has become associated by placing Egypt in its African cultural context. Uh, there are many links between ancient Egypt and modern African cultures, such as headrests and hairstyles like the side lock. Okay, what country is Kemet now? A number of names were used for Egypt, so it's still Egypt. Okay, why is Kemet an importance of life history? There you go. Uh, to social sciences, Kemet contributed to the first order of policing a social, of policing a social order. Farmers benefit from their inventions and ox drum plow, the sickle irrigation, and grain grinding mills. Ladies, we should thank Kemet people for their invention of wigs and cosmetic makeup. I've seen ancient Egyptians have Egyptians, Arabs. What was Kemet called before language? Was the creator in Kemet what language? What race? Who controls Kemet today? What was Egypt called in the Bible? Uh, the 42 Egyptians and the rest of them. What did the people of Kemet look like? What was Kemet famous for? The Kemetic people, uh, the Kemetic people, the Kemetic people designed and built pyramids and made important contributions in many fields, including. Uh, mathematics, agricultural, uh, yeah, architecture, chemistry, medicine, and more. They express their ideas in sacred symbols, such as those found in the pyramids and in the tombs, like that belonging to Tutankhamun. Okay. When did Kemet turn into Egypt? So, then from 525 BCE, non-African rulers controlled Kemet, which became known as Egypt under I can't read that word or the 
automatic rulers then in 642 CE Egypt became so wait a minute so Egypt was never called Egypt until it was taken under Roman rule So Rome's rule over Egypt officially began with the arrival of the Octobrian era. In 30 BC, including the defeat of Mark Antony and Cleopatra in October. 30 BC. It says um, Five twenty five BC. Prince Egypt. Okay. Five twenty five BC. Very good. History of the Jews in Egypt in the nineteen fifties, Egypt. Began to expel the Jewish population. 1940. There we go. When were the Jews enslaved in Egypt? Third century BCE. So, as early as the third century BCE, there was a widespread dysphoria. Third century BCE. Okay, so now we get to uh, the homie named Moses, all right? So first and foremost, let's mention the fact that we got ourselves a question right here. Why isn't Moses mentioned at all in ancient Egyptian pharaohs, inscriptions, and plays, okay? Now this is interesting because Moses was not considered a pharaoh, right? Now we know that he, you know, the story about him floating in a basket being a king of pharaoh, so on, whatever, or being a uh, being brother of pharaoh. Excuse me. Moses. What are the teachings of Moses? It says that the teachings of Moses. What was Moses most important what, what, what was Moses most important teachings? You come down here on behalf of Israel. Moses uh, received the Torah traditionally translated law that is up here, that is not law in the modern sense, but rather authoritative teaching instruction or guidance. The most famous of these teaching uh, of these commandments are the ten. So, you have the, so in other words, when it says Moses broke five clay tablets, he broke five clay tablets of the Torah, essentially, if, 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 I'm, if I'm understanding that, okay, what four lessons can we learn from the life of Moses, okay, but if we go forward and we ask, where did Moses get the Torah? <laughs> we see rabbinic writings state that the oral teach the oral Torah was given to Moses on Mount Sinai, uh, which, according to the tradition of Orthodox Judaism, occurred in 1312. <laughs> Where did the Torah come from? Uh, did Moses receive the Torah or the Ten Commandments? How did Moses write the Torah? Where was the first Torah found? Okay, so where did the Torah come from? 
On the basis of a variety of arguments, <coughs> modern scholars generally see the completed Torah as a part of the time of the Persian Academical Empire. <coughs> or academic, whatever, uh, although some would place its composition in the Hellenistic period, okay? Uh, did Moses receive Torah or the Ten Commandments? The Torah is considered by Jews to be the holiest part of the, something I can't pronounce, was given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. <coughs> when was the first time? How did Moses write the Torah? Let's, let's look at that one more fast. Then I have a different question. The, rabbi, the rabbis were aware that some phrases in the Torah did not seem to fit with divine dictation of a pre-existent text in this advert oh, this awareness accounts for a second tradition of how the divine word was transmitted god spoke and moses remembered the divine words and wrote them down afterwards together with some explanatory so Mount Sinai, S-I-N-A-I, -I. what importance did Mount Sinai Sign I have to the comedic religion. Mount Sinai, Egypt. Mount Sinai is venerated by three faiths as the place where God revealed the Ten Commandments to Moses. Comedic Egyptian spirituality that illustrates tradition. While that comes from ancient comedic spirituality, you can open the word. Humans great tradition. Hmm. Mount Sinai in the wilderness where after crossing the Red Sea God met with Moses to live with. Okay. What importance did Mount Sinai have? So nothing involving Kanishan at all or Kemet to the Egyptians. The chapel encloses the rock, which is considered by it is considered to be the source of biblical tablets. So, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim traditions all have deep ties to the landscape and the monument. did Mount Sinai have to the Egyptian faith? Yeah, what is important? Mount Sinai. What importance did Mount Sinai Alright, so now I'm going to hit y'all with my business plan, right? So, I mean every bit of what I'm saying. <coughs> I'm uh, technologically illiterate, uh, so I don't know if there possesses a way for a account 
And of course, I'd be explain, expressing that to my bank and to PayPal. That's the only people I'll take any information from. But I don't know if there possesses a way for an account to be viewable to the populace without being touchable. I, I, I don't know. So I had to figure that out. But uh, this is what I'm promising. This is what I'm planning. This is where the goal is. Okay. So I have lots of things I want to do. Uh, we're going to name off two of them in this business plan and uh, we're going to start ourselves a model for how we can change the world uh, just with me being on this simple YouTube channel and you hitting the donate button. All I'm asking for is a dollar here, here, what, here, what's your dollar going to do real fast before you judge me. So, <laughs> when you give me a dollar, okay. So you're going to hit that big red donate button. Here's what's going to happen. Now, uh, I'm opening up a business account with PayPal so that I can accept uh, all forms of payment. That way I don't have to just have a PayPal to PayPal. You can, I assume according to the way that I understand it, you can pay with anything you want to. Visa, MasterCard, your bank account, your debit, your whatever, okay? I chose to use PayPal. I understand there's something about some sort of percentages, whatever. I don't care. I want you to know that you are safe in opening up your wallet to me. And I want to make sure that's done through uh, the most reputable that I know of, which is PayPal. Okay, I could be wrong, but it, it appears to be when you say online banking or internet, I, I think the word PayPal. So, so there you go. So that red donate button. It's going to put, uh, whatever you donate to me, all I'm asking you for is a dollar, but I'll, I'll make it so you can put more if you really want to, but I just, thank you. Um, but what's going to happen is, is that when you, when you give me one dollar, okay, I want you to know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> so it's going to go to this PayPal account. Now, uh, I'm sorry, okay, I understand. I might be a little paranoid, that's fine, okay? I don't like the idea of my money just sitting on PayPal, okay? So what will happen from there is once you, once you give me that dollar, that dollar goes from PayPal to the checking account, which is always going to be empty because the second I put money in the checking account, I'm going to sort it this way and I'm letting you know how I'm going to sort it. Okay. So we have check-in. Okay. And then we're going to have savings. And over here, we have personal. to you guys I'm being straight up with you guys this is how this is how I plan on doing it okay so number one when you donate me a dollar it's gonna go to a PayPal account okay that dollar what'll happen is is that right off the top okay while it's still in the PayPal account I'm going to use 33 percent of that dollar right off the top to advertise my videos, my content, my everything. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use that 33% right off the top for that. That way I can get these videos pushed in other places other than just YouTube. That way I can, that way I can move things forward here because I have a goal here. So but 33% of that dollar is gonna come right off the top, okay? Then with the leftover amount, so the remaining 66%, okay, is gonna come down here. Now I'm not even gonna write a figure because this is how my banking is gonna go so you guys know. When it goes into my checking account, okay, I'm gonna put 66% of what's remaining that comes from my PayPal over here for taxes. Okay, I'm going to pay 66% of my taxes quarterly, okay, even if it overpays, 
I think you can gain interest that way, and if that's the case, that works too because it'll keep this ball rolling faster. Okay, uh, but I'm gonna over. I'm gonna pay 66% to my taxes. It's gonna sit in a savings account until I pay quarterly every year. Okay, 33% uh, of that is gonna go right over here, right? So, or, well, I guess it'd be. Well, no, I, I'll leave 1% in the checking account. So 33% of that is gonna go. Of what, of what comes from PayPal, right? So 66% is gonna go to my to my savings for taxes. 33% is gonna go to my checking for my own personal living, okay? Now I wanna tell you what I'm planning on doing with my own personal living portion of this. That way all this will make a little sense to you. And maybe it make a little more sense to you as to why you wanna give me that dollar on that PayPal uh, if you choose to and if you're in the in the place to be able to, okay? And that's this right here. Okay, <laughs> so that 33% that I set in my check, and of course, uh, you know, I have to pay my bills and such as that, but if I get enough money in there, if, if you can help support me, if you can help me make this my nine to five, okay? If you can, I'll, I'll dedicate myself to you. you it's, there might be a day lapse here, day or two laps here, here coming soon because uh, I've just hammered at this. I, I built this thing and then uh, I've been hammering and teaching myself all these things. I still haven't even figured out how to put these videos to YouTube, but I know that I'm getting the film uh, taken care of. And uh, then as soon as that's done, then I just got to set up the PayPal account, which I'm talking to you about now and uh, set up a, uh, uh, what you call it, figure out how I can even post these videos on YouTube because I, I don't know that yet. But <laughs> when you give me that dollar and I put 66, I put 33% to advertising initially, and 66% of that comes to, uh, comes from my PayPal account to my checking account, right? And 66% uh, of what comes to my checking account is gonna go to my savings and 33% is gonna to go to my uh, my actual, what I live off of, right? I'll leave that 1% in there for emergencies or in case we wanna splurge on the, uh, uh, on doing something for the channel or something like that, I, 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 I don't know, okay? But uh, but what, what'll happen here is this right here, is I'm gonna take that 33% and I'm gonna buy real estate. specifically and I, I don't know because it doesn't make any sense for me to ask for your money for me to just turn around and go throw it into a hole that's not going to be any good with that being said I, I think I would like to buy up low-income housing because with the goal in an I, I know I know I'm going to say something here and you guys are going to think it's stupid and you guys are going to think it's too good to be true, but I actually have a plan for it. It could work if we work together. It's up to you. It's a button push. It requires you to give me a dollar. It, it's up to you, okay? But but this is this, this is what I'm trying to work out with you real fast, okay? So I'm going to start uh, buying up real estate. I'm going to start a real estate business, okay? Now, if you give me your dollar, like I say, these things will go this way. This will be 33% goes, you know, like I said, I pay my bills first and all that stuff. And when I can afford it, I will, I will invest in real estate. And I'll put videos on here that way you guys can see that I'm doing the thing. I, I, I believe in holding myself accountable so you guys will be able to see this. All the way from the me starting here in the shed to the whatever this ends up being, okay? Well, what I would like to do is I would like to buy low-income housing, okay? And there's a reason for that, and it's not anything judgmental. It's not, it's not, it's not, okay? So, I want you to understand something, and I don't, uh, I don't know that you will, but I'm going to try to give it to you, okay? <laughs> so, when it comes to business, you can file what are known as losses, okay? And I want you to understand that real fast. So... You hit the dollar, okay? 66 gets gets set back for taxes, and then whenever everything gets returned, 
uh, that money will go right back into real estate for buying low income housing is what I'm hoping for. But again, like I say, I'm not going to sink my money into a hole. I want to make wise choices, okay? But because I, I want to make these places where people can live at, okay? <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So I want, uh, I would like to buy low income housing. And what I would like to do is this right here. Now, it's my understanding that if you buy like a sixplex, this low income housing, okay, then you're guaranteed you get the money uh, because it's low income housing and the state has something worked out. And I'm, I'm talking about giving you guys cushion on both ways on that. And this is, this is how. So <clears throat> you buy low income housing, right? And let's say low income housing promises you a thousand a month. Okay, uh, whereas they charge the tenant, let's say six fifty. Okay, this is we can we can end homelessness like this. Okay, I yeah I, I I don't know how to display it on the internet. If there's a way for me to figure that out between PayPal and my banks, I will. Okay, that way I can hold myself accountable. That way you can look and you can see what's going on, okay? But if you hit that dollar button right now, okay, this is what I'm planning on doing with it. Now I got to get me straight, okay? I, I, I literally, this is it. This is what I'm doing right now. This is, I'm devoting my heart and soul to this. This is, this is, I need to see where this goes. And I feel that God has called me to it. And that's, that's, that's where I'm at with it. And, uh, uh uh, this is the last of the videos for me to produce. As soon as I get it all edited, I'm putting it out there. But it works like this. Sorry. If you guys can donate me enough money, okay, then what ends up happening is this right here. Is that the money would be handled as I explained and I will buy low-income housing. Okay. If they pay me a thousand a month, okay, and and I and I, I get I get so first I have to buy low income housing, second I have to have enough low income housing to make an impact, okay? But but we'll get to that and I'll figure out at the very least I'll just come up here to this whiteboard and I'll talk you through what we're at on things so I can hold myself accountable. I I, I mean that. I I'll do that. There's no there's no reason why. I I can literally I'll treat you as if we are a relationship. Right? And I will let you know as far as when I say relationship, I mean business partnership. And uh, and I'll let you know uh, what it is that I'm doing with our channel as far as where, where we're going with things. Okay. But the plan here is this right here is that, uh, of course, I got to I got to fix me. But I buy this low income housing. I buy enough of it. If they pay a thousand dollars for the person to pay six fifty, the reason why I got those two put up on the board is this right here. If you guys donate me enough money, then what we can do is this. I want to make it. Okay, this is a multi-impact statement. I want you. I want you to hear me real fast. Okay, so these are these are low-income housing. Okay, I want to make it so that a person, anybody, who qualifies for low-income housing. Okay, now. Everybody always says, well, somebody has to foot the bill and I want to foot the bill. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, flat broke. Uh, I need you to help me. Okay. But I want to be that source that foots that bill. And I want, I want to explain to you what I'm putting the bill of and what it is we can do with this if you help me. Okay. So. If you donate me enough money and I get enough low income housing and I get enough of them, okay, then this is what can happen. I want to make it so that a person only pays rent once every quarter, okay? So that's once every three months, okay? A person would actually pay rent once every three months. Now, here's what I mean by that. So this, this is, uh, all things are double-edged, but this is, this is a good thing, both sides, okay. So number one, <laughs> when the state pays me $1,000, when, when the person's only given 650 
the state is bumping me up three hundred and fifty dollars per person, okay, or per rental unit, okay. So if I make it so that a person only pays rent once every quarter, so once every three months, okay, then what ends up happening is is that two of those months the state don't pay me three fifty. So now your taxes are more effectable. That's 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 one thing. But then the, the other thing is this right here. Now you as the person renting, okay, you still have an obligation of six fifty. Okay? So every month you as the you know, I, I know I just said that you ain't paying rent, but once quarterly and now I'm saying you're paying rent every month, but you are paying rent every month, okay? You will you will not lay back, relax, none of that. No, uh, you will have a job, okay? But we're gonna get you somewhere with your job, and we're gonna make this thing possible. That not that the only way to do this is there has to be money coming in to support this. But I want you to hear what I have to say real fast, okay? So, if a person is in charge of coming up with six fifty every month for their rent because they qualify for low income housing, okay, and I'm telling you that. I am only charging them once every quarter. So I'm only taking that 650 once every three months. Then that allows for 1300 every quarter, right? Now here's what I propose. I propose that if you can help me generate enough revenue to create this so that this $1,300 that this person would be paying to low income housing now goes back into their pocket. Okay. Now, why would we do that? And how would we do that? Let me explain. So this $1,300 before it goes back to their pocket, because it's going to go into their pocket. It is their money. But first it's going to pay for two people. Okay. I want every person who has to pay rent to have two people in their life. You know what that is? I want every person to have an accountant, right? And I want every person to have a therapist, right? Now I know you're thinking to yourself, well, why on earth would I want an accountant or a therapist? Or why would I sign up for having an accountant or a therapist? Uh, I just go rent somewhere else and that's fine. Uh, you can still rent from me. You don't have to be part of my little game here. However, at the same time, what that equals out to is, is that if you choose not to be part of my little game, uh, I'll take my 650 from you every month. Thank you kindly. Okay. But if you want to, to play along here, then this is how this works. That $1,300 will be able to pay for you an accountant and a therapist. Okay. So, there are two people in the world that are guaranteed to give a damn about you because somebody's paying them money to do so. Okay. Now, $1,300 don't sound like a lot, but over a period of time, it will be. Okay. But number two, if you have an accountant managing your money, they can make sure that they pay themselves and the therapist. Okay. Number three, if you're in a person, if you're a person with a substance abuse addiction, problem or, or some sort of a drinking problem or something like that, you know, you have a tendency for benders or whatever, uh, you're not going to be able to get a hold of that money from your accountant without your therapist's okay. Okay, so now you have an actual real responsible $1,300 every quarter of the year, okay, that handled properly by an accountant and therapist will be used responsibly in your life. So if you have child support to pay back, if you have overdue taxes, if you have bills to pay, these two individuals are going to make sure that you pay them. So that way we have forward movement in your financial future. Do you understand? Okay. And so uh, eventually as you fix all these things in your problem, this thir in your situation, this $1,300 gets set back and set back and set back either A, for you to buy a home, B, for you to do something with your credit. Or, or, or see to move into a better place, whatever it is that you want to do. Eventually, I will have better homes that I buy as part of as part of this, as this thing keeps on going. But what I need from you, my business plan, it all hinges on you. You got to hit that donate button. You got to give me at least a dollar. All right, that's, that's, it's a dollar, okay? 
that's what I'm going to do with it. 33% of it is going to go towards that. Okay. I'll make my money off of, I mean, I won't make any money. That's, that's, that's kind of the point is that I'll be making my money off of the donate button off of the 33% where I told you to go where it'll come from. Right. So I'll, I'll, I'll live off of that. But, but I'm my, my goal. Okay. Is to buy up as much housing as we can. That way we can get people off the streets. I want you to understand this does a couple of things. Okay. So number one, if you get people off the streets, you know what you, what you lower, you lower crime. That's right. When you don't have people on the street with nothing better to do than to have their hands in their pockets and walking down the road, right? Peeping stuff, contemplating, figuring out what they're going to do, uh, you have less crime, okay? But they don't have a real reason to want to step outside of crime until you can give them a home. And you can't give them a home until you start solving things. And, and, and I think this is where it starts at. Okay, I think that we can generate enough money to make it so that eventually no person has to be homeless. Now, now there, there are people out there that like to be alone. There are people out there that have their own way of life. Okay, it, it, and that's that that that's fine. Okay, that you know, um, but uh, but for the majority, we can make homelessness a past issue. Now, I want to tell you something else we can do. If we get this going good enough, okay, because because this can actually generate money over a period of time. It's just a slower clock. And I don't mind doing the slower clock if what we have going here is we're helping people, we're lifting people up, we're better in our community and we're making things happen. And like I say, that what what if what if for this what if for this holiday season, what if you had an accountant and a therapist that it helped you remember all the little things that you had brought into the therapist that you talked about your girl or you talked about your your kids or you talked about your dog right and so you got a person that actually gives a damn about you listening to you help you figure things out right but then you also got an accountant to make sure that you set back enough money how how would thir an extra thirteen hundred dollars have helped you this holiday season right and what if you could provide that to the man who qualified the man woman family that qualifies for low income housing Okay, but you can, and it's right here, and that's what I'll do with it. I, I, I'll, like I say, uh, when I make a move, I'll check in with it. I, I, I don't, you know what I mean? It went, the second I go to buy a house, uh, and I go to get uh, uh, some low-income housing and whatnot, what I'm doing with it or whatever, I'll let you guys know, okay? And I'll let you guys see what, what's happening with it and what's, what's going on. And they'll know that it's as a result of defy yourself the channel that we got right here okay but but it it all it all hinges on you donating that dollar and, and 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 that's up to you but that's what i'm doing with it that's my business plan uh i believe god called me this like i say so i i, I already know but um but nonetheless though uh thank you very much and uh you guys have been a joy to host even though and then y'all been talking to me. I've been talking to you. And uh, y'all take care of yourself, all right? All right, later.